Welcome to Life in Balance. Today we're going to be talking to Dr. John Thomas, who owns uh, Vibrant Life Health Center, yep. one of the co-owners there. Um, our subject today is really about, you know, how do you know if a chiropractor is good for you? How do you pick a good one? Right, exactly. Yeah. That's a big piece of the puzzle because yeah. how many people do you know that say, well, I tried chiropractic once, it wasn't a good experience? And I've actually, I've talked to people, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at them and they're like, oh, my back is killing me. I said, why don't you go see a chiropractor? Oh, no, I went to see why they didn't do anything. Right. Well, and I said, well, look at them. Maybe you didn't go to a good one. <laughs> right, exactly, you know, and, and it's, it's amazing to me that they would do that because, you know, if they went to a doctor, an MD. The doctor ain't going to fix it back. You know, and, well, they, you know, they might go to one and they'd be like, oh, well, he didn't help me, but they'll go find another one. They'll go look and they'll say, you know, that was just a bad apple, you know, yeah. but and when it comes to chiropractors, they just, they label it all, no, it's they just label all nonsense. They label like they're bad, right. And it's, it's crazy, if they go to the doctor, in most cases, the doctor is not going to fix that problem. The most the doctor is going to do is give you some kind of masking agent like Tylenol or yeah, well you know we ibuprofen always, or whatever. Right, we you call know, it a cocktail. Oxycot yeah, cocktail. muscle relaxant, right. anti-inflammatory, and, and a right. pain reliever. Right. Yeah. And so. Or they want to stick a needle in you. Yeah, there you go. That, right? That's really. <laughs> yeah. Mm, no thanks. No <laughs> thanks. You know, and that's where they where they are. They're sick and tired. You yeah. know, a lot of people are just sick and tired of being in pain. Right. You know, we even saw one in the meeting earlier this morning with a young lady who's in back pain, you know, yeah. complaining about it. And that's, you don't have to be there. Yeah. You don't, don't have, have to go through that. You don't have to have back pain. You don't have to have neck pain. You don't have to have lots of headaches. Yeah. You don't have to be overweight. There's a lot of different things that a good chiropractor can help you with. You just have to find a good one. Right. You have to be, and you have to know what to look yeah. for. And that's what we're going to cover in the show today is what are you, what, one of the things that you should look for to make sure you're in the right place. Right. So I have a list of items here that I know that we're going to talk about. So the first one is, you know, how do you get a good recommendation for a good chiropractor? You know, and that's really, you're finding people that maybe have the first thing. Find someone who has the same problem as you. Right. You know, have they had success? Do they, are they going to someone where they're getting an actual result that's right. going to be a benefit to them? Or do you have family and friends that have that? Or does one of your friends have a mother that went to a right. chiropractor? I'm a, big, I'm a big believer. You find somebody who can give you a testimonial on somebody that you're looking for, that's probably the person to try. Exactly. I mean, it may it'll not be, be the perfect fit for you, but it'd be a person to it'd try. Be a, it'd be a first point to entry, because then you can learn from that, and you right. can learn you know, what you're looking for. You know, yeah, word word of mouth is like magic, I mean, for me. And most of the chiropractors I've tried, I've tried through word of mouth. Uh, and I would say 90% of them were really great, and yep. that's probably a better percentage than I've had with doctors, because a lot of times I go to a doctor, you don't even talk to them. I mean, you're in the in there for like 30 minutes. They came in and said hello. They asked you three questions and they leave, and you got a bill for 280 dollars. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> and that's that's not what you want. You want no. to have some involvement. You want you know you've got to engage in this doctor because you know you're selecting somebody right. who's going to take care of you, and that's what you've got to remember. It's not that they're selecting you as a patient, but you've got to make sure that you're looking at this objectively and say, hey, look, is this person really the presentation here really going to solve my problems? You know, and, and answer the big three questions I always so you're, say. So you're saying that you really should, one, like go interview them. Because most of them mm -hmm. will give you like a free consultation. Exactly. So that would be step one probably. Go interview them, see if it looks like it's going to be a good fit. I think the logistics are really important also. I mean, most people are not going to drive 50 miles. Right. That's a huge, there. huge component because yeah. they won't. You know, there's there's some patients, I mean, in my office, I do have patients that are coming all the way from across the state to see me, and that's because of the results that right. they're getting. And, I, and they came in from a referral. So, a great point. You know, there was, there was somebody in their life that said, hey, I, whatever's going on, this guy can help you, and we, we were able to do that. And so that's really unique in that situation. Yeah. But logistics has to be part of it as right. well is, is he because you know can you catch him on the way home from work can you get there on the way to work can you catch him at lunch from work you know or you know when, when is the convenient yeah, because time if, to again if they don't do the treatment it ain't going to help them any exactly and, and you know you've got to understand that one of my favorite things is well if you go see a chiropractor you're going to go see him your whole life right and i always tell well then you must have only brushed your teeth once right, right? because Every adjustment that we make builds on the last. And so we're getting you better and better and better. So it's crazy that you don't want to come right. back in because you want to get more and more uh, improvement as you're going through. And in your office, it's, it's a really a sort of a much more holistic view. Mm -hmm. It's not just chiropractic. I mean, you're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Yes. And the the Life and Balance program, which is not just chiropractic, it's, it's really a whole program to help your life be in balance. Exactly. To balance everything yeah. out. 
And so that's we've got to look at that. And that's the other thing to think about when you're looking in a chiropractor. What's right for you is what else can they help you with? I mean, uh, you know, you're going to enter in with neck pain. Well, okay, we're going to fix the neck pain. We're going to address that issue. But where else can they take me? You know, what, I mean, they're going to they're going to educate you. They're going to teach you. And if you're going into a chiropractor and there's not that environment where you're going to you're going to be able to learn more and, and okay. gather and grow in your health journey. Uh, then that might be a red flag to say, hey, this is somebody who's just turning and burning through people, right. and, and we don't want to have that. Yeah, and I know that I, I would always tell people, I mean, today we live in, in the Internet world. I'm an Internet marketing guy, so I know. But you can always go and look at their reviews. I mean, that's not a perfect system by any stretch of the imagination, but that's something that I think people should do. Yeah. I know in your office, when you walk in, you see lots of postcards and thank yous all over the place. Mm -hmm. and. People are doing that online as well, so that's another place you can look. You can check them with the Better Business Bureau. You can do mm -hmm. some research on people. Exactly. The Internet's one of the things nice about the Internet. You can do research on people. It's not perfect. I mean, there's some scams out there that, yeah, that are we, sort of scary. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, we've, we've seen those. You yeah. know, that's, it's, it's funny how they do that. But but, but you know, finding somebody who's an honest there that they're trying to help you, not just churn yeah. some money, is a big deal. And the other thing is to take a look at the doctor themselves. Okay. Do they look healthy? Are they healthy themselves? Are they practicing what they're telling you to do? Are they actually taking care of themselves and making sure that they're the best so they I'm can do that? I'm glad you said, you know, there was a chiropractor that was actually a pretty good chiropractor. Um, he didn't do everything. He did. He actually did some acupuncture and stuff, but I always had trouble when I went to see him because he was like 50 pounds overweight. Yeah. And he wasn't a big guy, but he probably weighed like 225 pounds, and he was like 5'6", and I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm going to the doctor. It's like I had a doctor who was a, a, a D.O., or an old deal, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. And he smoked like a sieve, you know. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, in the seventies, they 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 uh, you know put a, a stamp of approval on that back in right. the magazine articles. You know, right. the doctors were smoking Marlboros and it stuff. Help you yeah. lose weight. Actually, it was one of the yeah ads. exactly weight loss program <laughs> right there. It's Marlboros. <laughs> but yeah. You know, and that's really what it is. So you want to make sure that you're looking at the individual, you know, look at the staff, look at the team, look at the environment. Is this really a place that promotes true health? Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that their hearts aren't in it and they don't want you to be your best, but right. you've got to have somebody that can walk it out. If you need right. an expert, you need an expert that's actually really doing what he's doing. You've got to walk the talk is the yeah. way I look at it. I mean, the best thing you can do is you go in and see your doc, and they're a health specimen. You want to be like them. I mean, that's the way I look at exactly. it. Exactly. That's what you really want. I know you You do a lot of athletic things. You've been yep. to karate oh. and all that kind of uh, stuff. Yeah, karate. I've been a professional downhill skier, so I've played all the you know the sports. And that's actually how I got into chiropractic because, you know, I needed it at one time, too. Yeah. <laughs> and it helped me in my career field. Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, then along came uh, my journey of corporate world and getting into the engineering fields that I used to hold. Uh, and I met a chiropractor that shifted our entire belief on health you know our whole paradigm was going in this direction and then we got shifted by a chiropractor and it changed everything including what we were going to do with our life and uh, eventually we just said hey look we've got to go do this too and yeah. we've got to we've got to make sure that other people have the opportunity to have these services because they're really needed that's really cool um let's talk about comfort zone you know when you go to the, the doctor's office i think you really need to be comfortable with the people there the office itself Yes. You know, you know, the environment has got to be, number one, very warm. The people, you know, yeah. the interaction, not just with the doctor, but with the staff as well, because they can reflect kind of what the environment is in the office, and you've got to make sure that that's in the right, you're, you're getting a warm sense from that as well. You know, are the patients giving you a, a, a warm sense? Are they happy when they're there? Are they, yeah. you know, is it, is it a stress-free environment? Are they, right. When you walk in, you see people usually sitting down. Are they smiling? Are they freaked out? Or Exactly. I mean, you might see some of them in pain. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You, you don't hold the chiropractor responsible for that because they're coming in that way. But, but uh, you know, especially when they're leaving, you know, yeah. are they happy? Are they, you know, and how are they interacting with the doctor? You can watch the other relationships that he has with his patients, and you can kind of see how that works. So that's really, really a big component is to how is that environment promising to, to what you want and what you need. Yeah. Um, I know that, I remember the very first chiropractor I went to, he did just one thing. I mean, he was what I call a whacker and cracker. So he likes to just, hands manipulation, I guess mm -hmm. we call it. And when he moved, I went to a different chiropractor. And this guy just liked to use activators. So mm -hmm. he had a little thing in his hand that yes. would activate you. And he swore that that's the way it was. And, and the reality is, there are a lot of chiropractors and, and medical physicians, that's why they specialize. So, uh -huh. But there are a lot of medical professionals that are really like a one-trick pony. pony right? Yes. That's what I call them. They're either a carpenter or a bricklayer, or and they only want to do it one way. And your office is different than that. We are. We actually, we, we really look at how is 
uh, our technique can approach you and, and get you the best result. Whatever technique we have to use for that, we will do that. And we're full, you know, there's the great thing about chiropractic is all those techniques you mentioned, activator, uh, you know, Gonstead, you have Diversified, you have Thompson, you have Cox Flux Distraction, all these things that we can do to, to approach the human body and how it needs to be adjusted and, and corrected um, really gives us the opportunity to have the latitude to address what you need in the comfort level that you have. And instead of coming in and just being brash and saying, okay, you know, I always say, you know, I'm a hammer, you're a nail, and, you know, that's not what you want to have. You don't want to have just one, one technique all the time being handed into yeah, you because yeah. your body's going to change through treatment as well. You know, you're going to have different presentations, and, and there may be a better adjustment and for that thing. Like, if, for example, an injury, you know, if you come in and, you know, do an ossified adjustment on a really – Injury. Acute injury, right. it could be you know, make it worse. It could be make it worse. You could have muscle reflex problems. You could have inflammation issues. You know, there may be a softer approach to come in and then correct it long term. Yeah, for example, some people may respond better to like a massage before. Yes, you know, and to get an adjustment, or to do you get the adjustment and then the massage? I mean, right. it really each each person is different. And I, what, one of the things I look for is what types of things can you offer me? Do you just offer a couple of things or you do offer Exactly. All? Can I really get all these different treatments? And that's, that's, your office really does it. And on top of that, you also offer a really comprehensive weight loss program that's medically supervised. You also have all kinds of genetic testing and blood testing to see what other yep. kinds of things, exactly. chemistry wise, chemistry, because that's another piece. Yeah. You know, your whole, the shift paradigm that you have that's on your yes. website is pretty cool. So. It's really a much more comprehensive, big picture approach versus most people are like, I just want to fix you. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's what it is. It's, it's, we're going to lay the foundation steps because, say, for instance, somebody comes in the office and they have, they have a shoulder pain. You know, well, we're going to identify where is that shoulder pain coming from, what's going on. But, you know, in, in a sense, that's one component of what's going on. There's a lot of other things that could be happening in your body. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I always love to share in education with my patients is you only feel 12% of your body. Yeah. So the 88% that's left there, you don't know how it's running. And if you're actually thinking that your health is how you feel, then you're missing out on what else is the 88% doing. And that's not a good thing. Yeah. You, you mentioned something that we were talking a little while ago, and I remember you said, you know, sometimes just getting a good picture of what somebody's doing can solve these problems where the, the problem goes away. If you were talking about going to somebody's office mm -hmm. and watching how they sit down and look at their computers and so on. And I had that personal experience myself. I remember several years ago, I was getting elbow pain all the time, and I couldn't figure out why. I mean, I stopped playing golf for a while because I figured I was, it was you know, yep, for the swing golf swing or something. Or something. Like that. And that's what that's not what it was. I was laying on my arm, and I was putting pressure on that part of my arm. Mm -hmm. And all I had to do was shift my arm just a little bit when I sleep, and that problem completely went, went away. away. Exactly, you know, and, and that's. And I had that pain for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> I've even had patients where I've talked to them because they come in and they have neck issues. And I'll be like, you know, when do you have it? And they always have it in the morning when they wake up. They didn't go to bed with it. And I said, you know, set up a video camera and tape yourself sleeping. Yeah. Take a look and see what's going on. Let's learn from it. Yeah. You know, and they were like, I never even thought of that idea. I said, well, you know, we've got to see what's going on. Right. We've, got to, we've got to take a visual and find out what is it that's, you know, that's called repetitive micro trauma. And I, had never had, I never had a chiropractor tell me that but I mean I've, I've had him say well what kind of pillow do you have yep you know, exactly that kind of stuff but again going above and beyond to try and figure out what's causing the problem is what you really do chiropractors try and do that but a lot of times still they get caught into the paradigm of fixing you yes versus trying to figure out what the hell the problem is and if they if they go that approach that you use yeah it, the patients feel better and, and to me, that's why you have all these lifelong, you know, clients. That's that's and all the all the <laughs> testimonies that we have for sure. Yeah, um, I know we're about we got about halfway into the show. Mm -hmm. um, want to promote the blog? I mean, so I want to make sure that people Definitely. go to creating a vibrant life on blogspot.com. There's lots and lots of articles there, and these are not sales pitch articles. These are articles that teach you about getting healthy. There's lots and lots of stuff there. Really, really great articles. Uh, absolute accurate information there's no we're trying to sell you stuff right okay? exactly and as a matter of fact there's links to WebMD and a whole bunch of other stuff that's on there uh, so make sure you check those out 
We also want to do the tip of the day. Tip of the day, the health tip of the day. You know, we talked about probiotics a couple a couple times. We've talked about it. And a lot of people have questions about it. It is something that can really help you a great deal. Um, you know, everybody's focused on digestion, you know, soda pop and soda. People, get women soda. always talk around, I'm gassy. I'm yep, good. exactly. You know, when you talk about that, oh, you know, I have heartburn all the time. I'm, I'm a, you know, Nexium or I'm on some type of a, you know. Or even, you know, you can actually have bad breath. Yeah. It's related to that. Or exactly. actually heart issues. Most people don't even think of that. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of things going on. And uh, and probiotics can really be helped. Now, is probiotics something that you're going to take today and feel this afternoon? Well, no. maybe not. It's going to take some time to make that change happen. But you've got to make a good investment in a good product. And that's what I really go after when I talk about a health tip is, you know, at least 12 strands have to be in that in that probiotic. Yeah. And, and in your cultures, you definitely want to have it above the 15 to 20 mil- right. billion. Yeah, so that there's things that are working in there. But the big thing is that I love to do on a health tip about probiotics is many people, when they go on antibiotics, and that's something that almost everybody has in their life, sometime or other, been on an antibiotic, you want to actually do the probiotics at the same time so that you don't deflate your yeah. intestinal system you so badly. That's right. You don't strip them out completely because exactly. that, that causes and, a big and problem. start the rebuild process. And, start and, getting, yeah, and if you start the rebuild process as you're doing the antibiotics, bingo. you're not in a big deficit Exactly. And you end it at the end of the antibiotics. Yep. And what's amazing to me, like, um, my son just got his teeth pulled. Mm-hmm. So they, they prescribe antibiotics to make sure you Exactly. Don't, but they didn't prescribe probiotics. No. No, nope, they uh, didn't. And, and generally when they prescribe antibiotics, they never prescribe probiotics. Nope. It's really sort of crazy to it me. It is. And I actually have, so f- you know, for your son too, I actually have just got into the office now. We have a group of probiotics that we brought in that are specifically made for while you're on an antibiotic. Their strands are specifically targeting for that, so we, they know it's going to be stripped, right. and they're actually rebuilding it as you're going through the, the, the basically the process of taking your antibiotic. Yeah, and I know from my own personal experiences, if I took the antibiotic in the morning, I would take the probiotic at lunchtime just to give them a little bit of space because I know mm-hmm. we're going to wipe out most of them anyway. Yeah. But, and I would just space them out like six hours apart, and that seemed to help because, again, I learned the hard way that if you don't have good floral balance, yes, it makes a huge difference in your digestion. I mean, I used to walk around bloated and all this kind of stuff, and, and I thought it was just the way I was. Yeah. But the reality is when you start eating the probiotics, that really went away. As a matter of fact, a lot of marketing companies and these big pharmaceutical companies are now selling probiotics. Yes, yes, they because are. Because <laughs> they figure that women are figuring out that it works yes. really good for them, and they're, they're making a fortune yeah. on because they'll send you like, 30 pills for like $25 or something. It's crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, it's definitely. So, again, you want to make sure that you have something that's, I always say, refrigerated. Mm-hmm. So it's a live culture. It's got at least 20 billion cultures in, in the in the product itself. And it's at least from 12 different strands. Right. You look for that, and you're going to hit a good, you're going to get a good product. And then use, utilize it. Don't look for it to, to give you an effect in two days and say, right. well, it's not working. Yeah, so you're gonna, you're not going to see effect probably for 30 days. Exactly. Just invest the time into it. Let it get working, and uh, you won't be sorry. You're yeah. gonna, be, you know, you're gonna have good and it, health. That it worked in conjunction with a detox program is a really exactly really nice, nice it's one to very punch, nice. I think. Yep. Um, so we're gonna get back to you know how do you pick a good chiropractor? Because uh, we're about eleven minutes in the, left in the show. Mm-hmm. Give me a few questions probably that that you could ask. Uh, chiropractic. Absolutely. You know, one of the big questions that I always tell patients to look at, you know, I have patients that will go out, you know, they'll move out of town and well, I want to look for a new chiropractor. What do I look for? You know, the questions you want to ask them is, you know, um, you know, are you a corrective care chiropractor? You know, is that something that you really strategize on? Are you going to correct my structure rather than just address my symptomology? Right. That's a big question to ask. Uh, ask him how, how, you know, how many techniques does he use? You know, does, does, is he involved? We've talked about techniques right. a lot in this. You know, what are the different techniques that he utilizes through the program? Yeah, and what are credentials he has, I guess. Exactly. You know, take, you'll find out. You know, where did he go to school? How long has he learned? And what has he done after uh, the schooling to, to increase his knowledge and increase his techniques and his abilities through continuing education to make sure that he's doing the right things to stay up in the breast is what the gr- gr- latest things okay. is. Chiropractic is evolving so fast as far as what we're doing and what we're doing in the health of people and that's really uh, a great thing for the, for the audience because mm-hmm. we're making ourselves better and better and better to take care of the issues that are coming into the office. Yeah, I, I usually ask also things like, you know, what kind of equipment do you use? Because I really think that the equipment that the chiropractor is using can make a big difference. Because yeah. just in the table, 
you know, there's the Mac Daddy table. Yes, there is. <laughs> and there's like this ancient thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. You, yeah, you uh, want to make sure. You, you don't want to go in there and see a you know, 1922 chiropractic table. It's right. probably not, not the most latest technology. In the, and that's a definite thing that you look at. Right. And, and, the te and the testing tools. I mean, the testing good. tools, what diagnostics is he using, right. you know, and what modalities. That's the other great question. Is what, what else other than chiropractic is he supporting with? Does he do soft tissue work? Uh, does the individual do any uh, uh, neuromuscular re-education? Uh, all those things are big things. And if you see that in the office, like when you walk into our office, we have the, the neuromuscular re-education, we have the cervical traction devices, we have the whole body vibration. Right. We actually in the, incorporate in our adjustments, we actually do all soft tissue work. So we're doing all that uh, to, to make sure that you're not only getting When an you're saying soft tissue work, you're talking about massage, those kinds of things? Well, I'm or? actually talking about things like active release techniques, uh, PNFT, it's, it's actually going in and finding out what soft tissue is related to the issue that we're treating okay. and releasing those as well because in the body when it has an injury it'll tighten up not only you'll, we always hear about oh you know I've got that's one the, the Grossen technique exactly the Grossen technique that I use that loosens up the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles it actually breaks fascia free it's a fascia release and so the body not only has a st structural correction but then we also correct the soft tissue so that it works as a team and then you get faster healing and faster recovery, and that's what we're looking for. And that's why when you leave his office, you normally don't have any pain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, do you usually ask them how long have they been doing, you know, being a doctor and that kind of stuff? Yes, actually, you know, it's always good to ask them that. Find out what their experience is, how long they've been in the community, you know, what, are the, what, what, what involvement do they have with, with organizations, you know, are they kind of in the line, you know, what, what is the doctor really, you know, does he walk the walk, or does he get adjusted? That's another great yeah. question. Do you get adjusted? Right. And, you know? and what's, what's amazing is a lot of chiropractors don't get adjusted. It's unfortunate that we don't, you know, and, and that's uh, that's something else. you got you got to make sure you're, you're on fire, too. I have several friends who are chiropractors. I actually have, when I was in college, uh, one of my girlfriends was a chiropractor, believe it or not. Oh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> and and she, she graduated with from chiropractic school when I was in college. She actually practices up here in Fleming Island. Okay. Which is sort of neat. So my wife is watching this, you know, but I'm not seeing her or anything. <laughs> Uh, but I, the other day I was listening to her, to do a, her 60 second presentation and what she said was today I'm going to get adjusted. And again, you don't normally hear chiropractors yes, say that. Yes, you don't say that. You don't, you don't hear us saying that. And, that's and, and they were going over to essentially a competitor that's mm -hmm. relatively close. But again, good chiropractors go to each other and help yes. each other out. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, I also like to ask, you know, what types of problems have you really solved that really made you feel good or something like that you know what's your why of this why do you that's, do this that's a great question especially <laughs> for chiropractors because um you know chiropractic is an art it really is the okay. techniques that we do it's, it's like being an artist and how we treat people and so those stories that how we have applied that art and seen the result of it is really exciting yeah. that's why we do what we do for sure like you just said and so you know some of the great stories that I love and enjoy is when I have patients that come crawling in the office. I mean, like especially when I, we were in a meeting together a couple Thursdays ago, and I got an emergency call while we were in the meeting, and I said, you know, he was going to head to the ER room. And I said, well, hang on a minute. I know exactly what's going on. I've been treating, you know, it's been my patient for quite a while. I said, I know exactly what happened, and he told me it was an injury from lifting. And I said, come into the office, and we'll take care of it. I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. And, you know, he's, he's hobbling into the office and really barely making it, and uh, he walked out. You know, and he was he was all set. And not only did he walk out and was pain free for like an hour, I mean, he got better throughout the day, and he got even better the next day. Yeah. And so pretty soon he was like, "Well, I don't need to come see you again until my next scheduled appointment. I'm good to go." That's a blessing. That's right. what really gets it going because that is somebody that we really help. You know, and, and then I shared a story earlier this morning about we had a 31 year old female that came in. She's a single mother, and she had 10 percent movement in her neck, and she really locked it up. Well. She couldn't go to work. Yeah. Well, for a single mother, that's a big right. deal. you got to be able to go to work. And, and we've got to get in that situation. I had her come in the office, and we took care of it. And, and after an adjustment and doing a soft tissue, she had full movement of her whole neck. And then she also just had a little strain, a little, little tightness. That was all she had left. Went to work that night, got better throughout the night, and then in the morning she was still doing great. And that's one of the things I can I follow up with them. So I know what's going on as, as they're being adjusted. But... Uh, those are the stories that we're talking about. That's what we're talking about is, is dealing with those issues. Um, Tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the first time a person comes into your office, give us an idea of the types of evaluations that you do. 
I mean, I know because I've been through them. You've been through it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, we're going to go through a complete evaluation. We're going to look at your nervous system. We have technology to do that. We're like the Tyron. The Tyron scan, Tyron yeah. Scan. Which will tell us exactly where you might have some interference issues in your, in your structure that might be impeding on how the central nervous system is functioning. Okay. And so we'll identify those things. And then we'll go through and we're going to go through your paperwork that you fill out. We're going to find out what is the history here. What are we looking at? What is the problem you're coming in for? But what could it be related to? You know, what do you do for a living? You know, those kinds of you have to start putting that story together to find out really what is this person coming in with and presenting with so you can look at that core cause of what's, what's the why, why is why you're here. And then we look through that. And then we're going to go and do a very in-depth examination, which is, is, is critical to do this. You know, and that, that examination is, it includes everything from postural evaluation uh, to neural, eva neural evaluation to make sure that the neural systems are all running fine. We're going to do orthopedic to identify key issues. Okay. So we're going to do a lot of different things, and they're very in-depth to your system to find out what are the problems that you're coming in with, but also what are the problems that you may not even know you have. Functional assessment as well. What do the gait look like? What are the things? Those are all things that we do to find out where your issues can be and even whether you know it or not. Right. And again, I, I I remember the very first visit I did when I left. I I know that it was in the, probably the most comprehensive um, pre-exam and, and uh, exam first exam that I had ever had because I spent about an hour and a half there. Mm -hmm. yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Whereas most chiropractors. You, you spend time filling out all the paperwork the first time, but you're not there with them more than, I mean, you, you get to see the chiropractor for 10 minutes, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, whereas the first exam with you is extremely comprehensive. It is. It and is. Then at that point in time, you're not, you don't have a complete put together, but you're starting to put together an overall plan. Exactly. We're going to find and out I, what's going on. And that I thought was really cool. The other thing was, when I left, I felt better. And in many chiropractic offices, they'll usually say, you'll feel better tomorrow. Right. So I know if you are out there and you've ever been to a chiropractor, you'll know that what I'm telling you is true. <laughs> They'll tell you, yeah, I feel better tomorrow. When I left his office, some of the stuff that he does, especially like these, you know, the, the soft tissue, yeah. and soft tissue stuff, that really addresses it to another level. Right. It just makes you feel better when you leave there. It does. And, and the next day, I didn't have any problem at all. I mean, mine was gone completely. So right. That's that was awesome. pretty cool. Um, Tell us about the, we got only about three minutes left. Get a little bit about treatment plans and how you put them together for them. You know, treatment plans are for the person. So, you know, a lot of times you'll go into a chiropractic office and they'll have a care plan and they'll have this and that. We really want to give you all the options. And we yeah, want and to I've actually seen them where they have generic care plans. It's twelve ninety nine a month. Yep, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a tablet, you know, or it's right. a template. And so we're going to go into that and we're going to talk to you and, and in that examination we find out kind of what your interest is, you know, because yeah. I'm not going to force you to come in and, you know, it's going to be three times a week for 17 weeks. You know, right. that's not what we're looking for. Right. What are we going to do to get you to the best that you can be and how does that fit your lifestyle and put a plan together that fits because that's where we're all going to get the best result and that's what we have to do. So yeah. our treatment plans are completely custom to the patients. Individualized. And, yes. And that goes with your weight loss programs, absolutely supplementation, life all and balance, those kinds of everything that we do is customized. The whole to you. life and balance thing. So I know we're getting close to the end of the show. Uh, we're going to be coming up with some new shows pretty soon. So we're yep. going to be talking about you know weight loss, weight loss. We're going to talking about back pain. Uh, yep. We'll, and one coming up, we'll be talking about headaches and another one pretty soon. Yeah. Um, and I want to make sure that I tell people to go to the blog, uh, creating a vibrant life, health. Absolutely. Uh, on blogspot.com, and you can go to Vibrant Life Health Center. Yep. Dot com. Dot com. Want and, to uh, give them the phone number? Yeah, definitely. Call 904 683 8177 and uh, get started. I mean, that's, there's all kinds of options to enter into the office and get involved with your health. That's yeah. what it's about. So, folks, until next time, we want to welcome you to Living a Life in Balance. See you next time.